Guys, in this video, you will learn how you can automate QR code attendance system using Pabli Connect. So guys, many companies and organizations use QR codes for getting contactless attendance from their employees. So they just paste the QR code at the entry points and their employees just have to scan the code and the attendance form will appear in their smartphone. So guys here, uh, we have created the attendance form which is connected to the QR code with the help of Google Forms application. And as in when the form is going to be submitted by the employee, the attendance will be saved in a timesheet here in this Google Sheets spreadsheet application. And if the if the employee is late, a message is going to be delivered to the senior employees like the managers or the bosses automatically on their WhatsApp, informing them that this employee is late today. OK, so this is how it is going to work. And uh, we can set up this automation very easily without any coding inside Pabli Connect's workflow. Let me show you how. So guys, this is the landing page of Pabli Connect. From here, you can set up your free Pabli Connect account and you will get free automation tasks every month to test and set up your automations, okay? So you can just sign up right now and then after that, you have to sign in and reach the dashboard of Pabli Connect. Here, you have to click on this Create Workflow button to set up an automation. So guys, here you can give a suitable name to this workflow as well. So I'm giving the name here as QR or let's say Automate QR attendance system. Okay. So after giving the name, just click on this create button and you can see your workflow page is getting ready here. And on this page, guys, you will find these two modules, the trigger and the action. So with the help of these two things, we can set up this automation. So guys, in the trigger module, you have to connect that application which is going to start this workflow or trigger this workflow. So guys, as and when I'm going to receive the response of uh, my employee in my spreadsheet via Google Form application, I want this workflow should start running. Okay, so Google Forms would be my trigger application and the action is the consequence of the trigger or the response towards the trigger. So it will make Pabli Connect perform any action according to the trigger. So I want that um, if the if the employee is late, then send a message. So we are going to apply this condition and connect with WhatsApp in the action to send the messages. OK, so first of all, let's connect the trigger application, which is Google Forms in our case. Search for it and select this. OK. And in the trigger event, select this new response received option. And it has given us this webhook URL. So with the help of this, we can make a connection with uh, the spreadsheet connected with the Google Forms. OK, so let me show you. This is a spreadsheet I have created. And this spreadsheet is connected with the form I have created to mark the attendance. You can see this is the attendance form here. I'm asking the name of the employee, the designation and the ID card number. And this is the spreadsheet connected with this form. And here we are capturing the data. So in this spreadsheet, you have to click on extensions and from this add on section, click on get add ons and you have to install an add on here, which is called Pabli Connect Webhooks. So from this Google Workspace Marketplace window, you have to search for Pabli Connect Webhooks, P-A-B-B-L-Y. Here it is selected. OK, and you have to install it here first. So it will just take two minutes. Uh, I have already installed it. OK, and after installing this, refresh the spreadsheet. OK, and after refreshing, when you click on extensions, uh, you will find this Pabli Connect Webhooks uh, add on option available in this drop down. And from here, you have to click on this initial setup. And under initial setup, guys, you will find these two fields, the webhook URL field and the trigger column. OK, so in this webhook URL field, you have to paste the webhook URL that you got from your workflow. And then the trigger column, you have to enter the final data column on which the data is added. The whole of the row data will be sent to the webhook URL. OK, so this means uh, whenever you can see in the D column, as I am going to fill the data, the data of whole row will be sent to the workflow. So this is the final column or the trigger column. 
Okay, so click on extensions, public connect Webbox initial setup. Okay, let me erase this Webhook URL that is already pasted and let me paste this one. This is the new URL we got. Click on copy and paste this URL here. Okay, right. And here you can see guys in the workflow as we have copied this URL here, it started showing waiting for the Webhook response. So this means now we can perform a test submission. So test submission means we need to bring some test data from our form response sheet to here in this workflow and uh, with the help of that test data we are going to move forward in this automation. So to get the test data here you need to go back and here you can see in the initial setup we have this send test button. So when you click on send test the data of the first response that you have captured will be sent as the test data. So I am clicking on send test here. Okay, and here you can see we got uh, uh, this kind of response here that is written test data sent successfully. Let's check in our workflow if we got the data. So here you can see guys th the response is captured here in this response received section and it is showing the name of the employee as test user, the designation, this is the ID card name and all these things. So these are the same things that I had here inside my spreadsheet form response sheet. Okay and it, the data got captured here as the test data. Right now you can go back to the spreadsheet and click on submit here in the initial setup. Okay, so setup is configured here successfully. Close this window and from this extensions public connect webhook uh, public connect webhooks option, you have to click on this send on event option as well. So when you click on send on event, what will happen whenever you are going to receive a new form submission here, the workflow is, will start running and the data will be sent. Okay. So after get, getting the form response here, we want that uh, this workflow should check the data and check if this employee is on time or not. And if the employee is late, we want to inform about this on WhatsApp to the HR or the manager or the boss. Okay. For that, we are going to apply the condition here uh, or check the condition here if the employee is late or not. And uh, here you can see we have received the timestamp label here in which we have received the date and the time of the form responses. Okay. So whenever the form is submitted, this timestamp capture the date and the time on which the form is getting filled. All right. So guys, uh, here I'm going to use filter feature to, to apply the condition and uh, the condition is that that whenever uh, let's say my company's timing office timing is starts from 10 a.m. in the morning. OK, so if my employee come after 1030, then I'll consider it as late and I want to be informed about this. So uh, here I'm applying this condition that when my employee comes after 1030 a.m. in the morning that uh, then a WhatsApp message should be received to the uh, to the HR or the boss that this employee is late. Okay, for that here you can see it is uh, in this filter it is asking to select the label, the select the filter type and mark a value here. So to select to apply this condition you have to select this label, this timestamp label. Let me show you how. But guys, in this timestamp you can see we have received the date and the time together. So we can separate these two things as well with the help of a feature of public and which is called uh, text formatter. Okay, so to separate the date and the time, I'm going to click on this plus icon and another action step will open up. From here, I'm going to search for text formatter. And in the action event, I'm going to use split text option, then click on connect. And here it is asking which text you want to split. So here I'm going to select this label, the timestamp label. Okay. So you just have to click here and it will show you the previous step or the trigger step in the drop down. And when you click on it, it will show you all the data from here, map the timestamp label. Here it is asking about the separator. So we are going to use this space in between the date and the time as the separator. Okay. So to put a space as the separator, you need to read the instructions. You can see for space as separator, use this. So you can just copy this format from here, paste it here. Okay. 
and in the segment index you, uh, it is asking which part you want to split out the first part the last part or the second part so here i am going to select la, uh, all option okay so click on save and send test request and here you can see now in this response we got the result zero label in which we got the date and the result one label in which we got the time okay so the time was split it out. Now we can use this result label in the filter step. So in the filter, it is asking to select the label. So just click here and it will show you. Okay. So it is not showing the text formatter step. Let me reconnect this. Uh, let me choose filter again. Okay. Then click on sec select label and here it you can see it started showing the text formatter step from here map the time label and in the filter type choose this option which is called greater than greater than okay and here put the time in the exact same format so i'm putting that office timing here as 10 30 00 okay so this means we are applying this condition that when the time response captured in the form is greater than 10 30 this means the employee is late and when the employee is late, we want to send a WhatsApp message to the boss. Okay. So we have applied this condition. Let's check this condition by clicking on save and send test request. Here you can see the condition is true. That means this employee is late. So when the employee is late, what we want, we want to send a message on WhatsApp for that. Just click here on this plus icon. And here we are going to connect with WhatsApp in the section step and to get the access with WhatsApp we need to have the access of WhatsApp's application programming interface or API. So we are going to use WhatsApp's own cloud API platform for getting that access. Okay. So uh, before searching for WhatsApp cloud API here, you need to connect your business number with the WhatsApp cloud API setup. And to know how to do that, you can watch the video from the description. We have created a dedicated video on the setup of WhatsApp cloud API. So you can watch it and set up it for yourself. After that, you have to just search for WhatsApp Cloud API here and it will show up here. You can select it and then you have to select this action event as send template message. Then click on connect. From here, select add new connection. And here you can see it is asking for the token of WhatsApp API, Cloud API, the phone number ID and the business account ID details. So guys, if you want to know more about these things, you can just click here on this here word you can see and you will reach this forum page of Pabli Connect and here you can see we have this these videos first. This is the complete setup of WhatsApp Cloud API inside Pabli Connect and this is the video on how to generate the permanent access token of Cloud API. Okay, so you can watch these videos. Then we have written instructions along with screenshots available for making the connection of WhatsApp Cloud API in the trigger and in the action. So you can learn many things from this page. Okay. For now, let me show you these three things in my Cloud API setup, which is here. So guys, I am under Meta for developer section and I'm under WhatsApp's getting started page. And here you can see we have this temporary access token. So guys, first they provide you temporary tokens, but these tokens expires in 24 hours. So if you want to run your workflows continuously, you need to generate a permanent one. And we have a video in the description as well. And here on this forum page on how to generate a permanent access token. Okay. You can watch this video and generate the token. All right. And after that, you have to paste this token here in this field. Similarly, you will find this phone number ID here like this. You can just copy it paste it here. Then you will find the business account ID. You can just copy it, paste it here. Okay. And after pasting all the things, click on save and you'll be connected with the cloud API. And guys, the connection that you're making here is going to be saved in our account. Okay. So if you want to make the connection again with WhatsApp cloud, cloud API, you can use your saved connections for that. You just have to select this existing connection option and it will show you the list of all the safe connections that you have like this. And from here, you can choose any of your existing connection and then click on save and you will be connected again like this. Okay. And guys, here it is asking for the templates name. So uh, to send messages on WhatsApp, we need to create message templates first, which are the pre-created standard message structures 
that you need to create inside WhatsApp Cloud API. And after that, by using those templates, you can send messages to multiple people for various purposes. Okay. So for this purpose to send the message for informing about the employee's attendance, I have created this template. You can see the name of which is attendance, attendance message template. So guys, if you want to know how to create such templates, you can watch the video from the description. We have a dedicated video on creation of the template so you can watch it and make it for yourself. Okay. So here you can see guys, this is how the message is going to look like when I'm going to use this template for sending the messages. It is saying, hi, sir, dash ma'am. This is to inform you that this person has marked his or her attendance after 1030. Thank you so much. So this is how the message is going to appear. And in this message, you can see I have this uh, one in double curly braces. Okay. This is the body field or the variable parameter we have in the message. Okay. So this thing the, here, we can place the name of the employee every time we are going to send the message and this value is going to change automatically. Okay. Let me show you how. First of all, select the message templates name like this and uh, the language code and the template ID will be auto selected like this. Okay. And here it is asking for the recipients number. And here it is asking for the recipients mobile number and the body field. Okay. So in the body field, I want to appear, I want to place the name of the employee. Okay. In this message. So to get this data change automatically, you need to map the value of the body field here only. So I'm going to use the test data that I have received from the form. Just click here and in the drop down, it will show you these steps. And from the first step, map the name of the employee like this. Okay. And here guys, you can put the number of your, uh, of the boss or the manager in this format with a country code and without any plus sign. So nine one is the country code for India. You have to place yours. So I'm going to put my WhatsApp number here just to show you the demo, how the message is going to appear. Then I'll click on save and send test request and the demo message will be sent to my WhatsApp number. Okay. So guys, here I am clicking on save and send test request and I have opened my WhatsApp here. Let me show you the message. So this is the response we have received and this is the message I have received. You can see guys here. It is saying hi, sir dash ma'am. I hope you can see it. This is to inform you that test user has marked his or her attendance at after 1030. Okay. So the test user was the name of my employee that I had here. And in the same message, the data got placed like this in the in place of the body field automatically. And this is how it is going to work guys. So every time the attendance is marked here like this, these kind of messages will be delivered to the HRs or the managers automatically if the employee is late. Otherwise the attendance is marked here. Okay. So we are done setting up this automation and you have to set up this automation only once guys. After that, you don't have to do anything manually here. After that, Whenever uh, the, the employees are going to scan the QR code, the form will appear in front of them and the data will be saved here in the spreadsheet. And if they are late, the WhatsApp messages are going to be delivered automatically. And guys, you can use this workflow as well if you want, because I'm going to paste the link of this workflow in the description and you can clone it in your own free public connect account and start using this automation instantly. Guys, thank you so much for watching our video and please, please let us know how our automation ideas are helping you in the comment section. And if you have any queries related to this application, please ask your queries from this forum link and do check the pricing of this application from this link. And guys, we are open to ideas. If you want us that we should make videos on other aspects of your business, please do let us know in the comment section. And if you like our work, please subscribe to our channel.